Module 3, Fundamentals of Blockchain and Distributed Ledger Technology Lecture 1, ICT Systems for Decentralized Solutions In this lecture, we will cover the following topics. Trends Fundamentals of Internet Communications This lecture is part of Module 3, Fundamentals of Blockchain and Distributed Ledger Technology. With this lecture, you're going to learn how to Indicate key trends in information and communication technology. Explain the concepts of Internet communications and identify key configuration settings. Discuss how Internet communications and ICT trends relate to decentralized technologies and applications. The minimum requirements for this lecture are Running commands in CLI Installing software on your computer Trends Digitalization strongly impacts nearly every aspect of modern business and society. It is expected that these trends will become even stronger in the future. Digitalization is based on many complementing past and current technological developments. These include, example, internet connectivity, mobile networks, mobile and web applications, social media, virtualization, distribution, cloud services, big data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, and augmented and virtual reality. Business sectors and application domains affected by digitalization range from industries, logistics, commerce, finance, insurance or health, to education, entertainment, and leisure time. Many novel digitized solutions are cross-sectoral. Even the most traditional businesses can benefit from digitalization. How does this apply to DLT? Distributed ledgers can be seen as one of the enabling technologies in digitalization. They provide a unique decentralized environment for the exchange and immutable storage of transactions and trusted execution of programming logic in smart contracts. At the same time, decentralized systems utilize many readily available ICTs, such as cryptographic mechanisms, internet connectivity, mobile and web applications, or cloud services. End-user applications, IoT devices, and nearly any connected system can collect immense quantities of data, therefore dubbed big data. Data centers, cloud, and fog services can store, process, and analyze big data. Machine learning, ML, and artificial intelligence, AI, are approaches to classifying or making database decisions. This provides valuable insights and supports database decisions. ML and AI technologies are not, do not have to be, seen as some future concepts from science fiction movies. They are already included in many ICT systems that are widely adopted. These include, example, recommendation systems, which hotel to book or which add to present, image, voice, and language processing, voice recognition, automatic translations, weather and traffic forecasting, vehicle safety assistance, or searching for anomalies in cyber protection systems. How does this apply to DLT? Distributed ledgers can collect and store large quantities of data, too. The chains in major public blockchain networks are approaching terabyte volumes and keep the transaction records from the initialization of the blockchain networks. Machine learning and AI methods can be applied to blockchains, example, to detect crypto laundering in blockchains or security anomalies. Extended Reality, XR, combines real and virtual environments. Wearable devices enable immersive human-computer interfaces to the XR environments. There are various forms of XR. Augmented reality, AR, the real-world objects are enhanced with computer-generated information, presented in visual, auditory, tactile, or other forms. Virtual reality, VR, provides a simulated experience that can be completely independent and different from any real-world environment. 
In extended reality, XR, the physical and artificial objects coexist and interact. XR applications include entertainment, remote work, marketing, real estate, training, medicine, and rehabilitation. Metaverse platforms utilize XR for users to interact with the environments. How does this apply to DLT? Blockchains are seen as one of the key enabling technologies for Metaverse. The decentralized approaches assure digital asset management in virtual environments and facilitate interoperability of Metaverse platforms, example, allowing avatars to migrate from one Metaverse to another. Cybersecurity is becoming a major concern for the trusted, reliable, and safe operation of ICT systems and the use of the provided services. Security breaches may result in loss of data or privacy, availability of online services, substantial financial damages, interruptions in business operations or critical infrastructure, or even endanger people's lives. No ICT system is safe in the cyberworld. Security risks are related to users, applications, ICT systems, and communication networks. The human factor is the most vulnerable link in the security chain. This includes application users, as well as the developers and experts who are providing ICT systems and services. How does this apply to DLT? Decentralized applications ensemble many communication and application technologies, which present possible risks. All parts of a decentralized system can be attacked, example, the blockchain networks and mechanisms, individual nodes, blockchain consensus mechanisms, cryptographic mechanisms, nodes application programming interfaces, denial of service, unprivileged access to APIs, smart contracts deployed in the network, and user wallets and accounts, web and cloud-based parts of decentralized applications, web, cloud, mobile user interfaces, crypto exchanges. Decentralized systems and the immutable nature of blockchain networks make certain vulnerabilities even more challenging in DLT, example, smart contract security. Modern mobile networks provide communication connectivity that is becoming comparable to one and wired networks in terms of bit rates, latency, and coverage. The focus in 5G mobile networks is providing communication services for the most demanding applications, such as ultra-reliable low-latency applications, example, autonomous driving and remote surgeries, massive machine-type communications for large-scale IoT deployments. Besides the device's high density, networks enable very energy-efficient communications and long-autonomous operation for battery-powered IoT devices. Enhanced mobile broadband application demanding bit rates of several hundred or more bits per second. These applications include ultra-high resolution and or 360-degree videos. Network operators use the same network core elements to manage subscribers and services in fixed and mobile networks. How does this apply to DLT? We no longer need to distinguish between fixed and mobile access when building decentralized applications or setting blockchain networks. We can also expect more IoT devices to become actors in decentralized applications. Fundamentals of Internet Communications Communication networks provide network services. In any kind of network, the key network service is forwarding data between the communicating entities, thus providing connectivity. The connectivity in different networks may differ in communication rates, measured in bits per second, latency, measured in seconds, or other indicators of the quality of the communication service. Network addressing is an underlying network service needed to provide network connectivity. We need to uniquely address the communicating entities, example, computers and printers in your office, to provide them with connectivity. Some networks provide additional services to enhance the basic connectivity services mobility, security, and quality. Users apply terminals to access networks and utilize network services. 
Public networks are provisioned and owned by network operators. Users do not own networks, but merely utilize the network services. The network services can be free or charged for by a service provider. How does this apply to DLT? Some type of underlying communication network is required for any entity comprising a decentralized solution. It is good to estimate the connectivity requirements of these entities, communication rates, latency, to make sure that they match the characteristics of the communication service. We use a variety of communication networks in our daily life, example, a 5G network for mobile internet access and voice services, optical access networks to attach our home networks to the internet service provider, or Ethernet for local connections in an office. Networks are comprised of network elements. Some networks are based on a single type of element, while others require a set of diverse network element types. Ethernet, example, provides wired and wireless local connectivity. The key network element is the Ethernet switch, which forwards Ethernet frames between the terminal devices, computers, printers attached to it. The physical connection to the switch is UTP or optical cables. To extend the network, several switches can be interconnected. Access points are applied for wireless access. The switch and access point elements can be implemented in the same device. Ethernet terminals need a wired network interface card, NIC, or wireless interface to connect to the Ethernet network. We can provide an Ethernet network for our private use by simply acquiring a switch and some cables and attaching the devices to the switch. For basic operation, a switch even does not require any configuration. Mobile networks, on the other hand, are more complex. There are dedicated elements in the network for the radio access, example, base stations, and for the core of the network, example, service provisioning and user management, gateways to other networks. Network operators provide these networks. Users thus cannot operate their mobile networks but merely subscribe to the services the mobile network operator provides. The connection to the network is wireless but also mobile. The latter means that the network keeps track of our current location to direct services to the mobile terminal. Roaming enables the utilization of mobile networks of other operators, example, while on a business trip abroad, while having a service agreement with your home network operator slash service provider. The variety of existing physical networks imposes the problem of their internetworking. We cannot, example, directly attach a mobile phone to a desktop computer because the former uses a wireless mobile connection and the latter a wired Ethernet. Internet communication protocols provide a solution for communication interoperability. On the Internet, devices are connected to different physical networks. At the same time, they use an additional communication layer with the Internet protocol IP. This IP layer can be seen as an overlay over the underlying physical networks and provides a uniform communication service between the devices. Apart from the Internet Protocol, the cornerstone of Internet communications, the Internet, in a broader sense, also includes the applications and services that run on computers and other devices, communicating over the Internet. Internet Protocol provides them with the exchange of data units called datagrams, which carry the content of our Internet applications. Internet is not equal to, the, Internet, mind the capitalization of the words. We can have various Internets based on the Internet Protocol. The Internet is the largest public implementation of IP-based Internets. How does this apply to DLT? All the building parts of a blockchain network or a decentralized application, example, blockchain nodes, mobile wallets, and web and cloud servers, use the Internet for communication. A communication protocol is the communication language in an ICT system. For devices to be interoperable, they must speak a common language. Therefore, its syntax and semantics have to be precisely defined. 
The Internet Engineering Task Force, IETF, is responsible for the specification of many Internet-related protocols, including the IP. The IP protocol is available in two flavors, IPv4 and IPv6. The latter is newer and addresses some of the known IPv4 issues. But despite this, IPv4 is still the most used one. The IPv4 specification, example, can be found in the document labeled RFC 791, which is publicly available through https colon slash slash www.rfc-editor.org. Apart from the IP protocol, other protocols are involved in the operation of an IP-based network. They provide control messaging and address resolution. The routing protocols help routers maintain an overview of the IP network architecture and advertise the changes. Hosts only need to know the internet protocol. Routing protocols are only implemented in network elements, i.e., routers. How does this apply to DLT? All the hosts building a decentralized system have to speak the internet protocol. Routing protocols maintain the IP network and are hidden from the hosts. An IP network is provided by routers, its network elements. A router is attached to several subnetworks, subnets, and usually to various physical networks. It forwards the IP datagrams from the incoming to the corresponding outgoing ports. Where to forward a particular datagram depends on the destination address in the datagram header and the forwarding rules. These rules are constantly adapted to the information a router receives from other routers through the routing protocols. In Internet terminology, a host is a device attached to an IP network. This can be a computer, mobile device, printer, IoT device, and the like. For remote delivery, a host creates an IP datagram, addresses it to the desired destination IP, and submits it to the nearest router. The host is then no longer involved in forwarding the datagram through the IP network. This is the role of the routers. The Internet Protocol Communication Network acts as a unified overlay, which hides the variety of underlying physical networks from the hosts. However, the operation of the IP network requires a division of the network into subnetworks. This division is needed for technical and governing reasons. Only hosts connected to the same physical network, example, the same local Ethernet, can be in the same subnet. The traffic from one to another subnet has to pass at least one router. We can spread the jurisdiction and management of smaller parts of the Internet to various institutions and therefore do not need a single, centralized network operator to run the Internet. Each host has a unique address in an IP network, including the Internet. In IPv4, the address is a 32-bit binary number. For simplicity, it is usually noted in the quadecimal format. This is mapping the binary value of each of the four 8-bit chunks of the IP address to the corresponding decimal value. Every datagram, the Internet Protocol Data Unit, has a header, where the control information is stored. Among others, there are the source and destination IP addresses. Based on this information, the IP network is capable of routing every datagram from its originating source host to the desired destination host. In IPv4, we can address a particular host with its unique unicast address or groups of hosts. A broadcast address is resolved to all the hosts in the same subnet, and the same IP datagram is delivered to all of them. In multicast, the same datagram is delivered to the hosts, which are set to participate in the same multicast group. The network mask, also called net mask or subnet mask, is a 32-bit binary number, too. It complements the IP address and is needed to properly interpret the IP address in a host. The mask determines which part of the IP address defines the subnet where the host is attached. The remaining part uniquely defines the host device in the subnetwork. The IP address and the subnet mask are required to configure an internet connection. 
we can manually set the IP address and subnet mask of each host in, example, configuration options of a computer. We can set these values also with the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DHCP. When a host newly connects to an IP network, it queries a DHCP server in this network, and the server provides it with the configuration parameters. Static settings are usually applied for servers and other computers permanently connected to the Internet, example, the blockchain nodes. Dynamic settings are used for other devices, which frequently connect to different parts of the Internet, example, mobile phones and laptops. Static and dynamic configuration must define the same scope of parameters, and all the consecutive IP communication in a host operate in the same way, regardless of the configuration approach. How does this apply to DLT? Ensure that your blockchain nodes and servers in the decentralized solution, web servers, APIs, have static IP addresses to avoid confusion, ensure smooth operation after reboots, and reliable communication between the blockchain nodes. Here is an example of an IP address in its binary form. If you take time and count the bits, you will see there are 32. This address can be placed, example, in the header of an IP datagram. The IP address in binary form. For convenience, we note the address in the quad decimal form. This is what we, example, write into a computer during the configuration of an IP connection. The IP address in decimal, 212.235.181.9. Apart from that, we need a network mask, too. For example, Networks mask in binary form. Networks mask in decimal, 255.255.255.0. You can notice an uninterrupted string of 1 in the network mask, followed by a string of 0. The switch from 1 to 0 separates the IP address in the sub network address and the host address in the subnetwork. Network address. Host address. Both are noted in decimal form, too. Network address, 212.235.181.0, DC. Host address, 0.0.0.9, DC. Most IP addresses that can be defined with a 32-bit IPv4 address are used to address hosts on the Internet uniquely. However, some of them have a slightly special meaning. These are the private addresses, which are meant for private IP networks and to address hosts that are not directly accessible on the Internet. There is no technical difference between a public and a private IP address. They have the same structure, require a network mask for interpretation, and can be statically or dynamically assigned. So all the IP networking and addressing principles apply to both types. It is an agreement, a best practice, of using the address space, commonly accepted in the Internet community and, therefore, also defined in RFC 1918, https://www.rfc-editor.org/.info/.rfc1918. This document defines the ranges of private IPv4 addresses. 10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
Private addresses are commonly applied in our home or office networks for various reasons, among them the depletion of available public IPv4 address pools and the security of local home and office networks. Network Address Translation, NAT, is the mechanism that interconnects the privately addressed networks with the public internet. A private internet protocol applies private IP address space. Like any other local network, the devices can belong to the same network ID and communicate locally through their shared local physical network. All the local hosts connect to the internet via one router in their local network. This router, also called the gateway or default gateway, is also connected to the public internet. One of the features of the default gateway is mapping and translating the local IP addresses of the hosts with servers on the public internet they are communicating with. This mechanism in the default gateway is called Network Address Translation, NAT, and enables communications that start from the local network and target public servers. NAT needs no configuration. All the needed information for address translations is built on the fly by the gateway. To access from the internet a server installed in the local network, having a local IP address, another mechanism in the gateway is needed. This mechanism is port forwarding. Port forwarding defines to which internal server a request from the public internet must be forwarded. The forwarding is set manually in the gateway for each local server we need to expose publicly. How does this apply to DLT? Due to the peer-to-peer -peer nature of blockchain network communications, blockchain nodes act as clients and servers simultaneously. Besides, they mostly do not support advanced NAT traversal mechanisms as do, example, voice over IP applications. It is therefore advised to use public IP addresses for the blockchain nodes that connect to public or hybrid blockchain networks. Disregarding this principle is not impossible but requires expert IP networking skills and full control of nodes and local network infrastructure. Private addresses for the nodes are meaningful if we run a private blockchain network, accessible only in our private network. The Domain Name System DNS is an internet naming system that contributes to the existing addressing of the hosts on the internet with their IP addresses. DNS hides the IP addressing from users and enables the naming of, example, servers with user-friendly domain names. E.g., server with the IP address 212.235.181.9 is named www.fe.uni-lj.si. DNS servers help a source host device to resolve the DNS name of a destination host to its corresponding IP address, which is required for communication through the IP network. In computer settings, we set the DNS servers used by the Internet host. This can be done manually or along with the IP address settings through DHCP. The DNS improves user convenience by user-friendly naming of computers. Besides, DNS allows application developers to move, example, an application from one server to another, the IP address of the server thus changes. At the same time, users still access it with the same domain name. It can also balance heavily loaded servers or provide location-aware services. How does this apply to DLT? It is recommended in decentralized applications to use DNS naming for web and API public servers or interfacing end-users. This makes the provisioning, adaptations, and scaling of the decentralized application without negative effects on the end users much easier. The domain name system is organized into top level domains and subdomains. With this, we can distribute the management of the system. Every institution, or even a single person, can then manage the names in the subdomain they have control of. A new domain name has to be properly noted in the corresponding domain name server. When adding a new record to an existing subdomain, this is done by adding this record to the authoritative name server of the domain. 
DNS system makes sure that the change is adopted in the next request for name resolution. We must register the domain through a domain registrar if we need a new domain. In the registration process, they verify that the desired domain has not already been granted to someone else. Usually, we pay some yearly allowance to keep the domain registered on our behalf. During the registration, we need to define which DNS server will be authoritative for our domain. We can run our own servers or use hosted DNS servers that the domain registrars frequently provide at no cost. The registrar makes sure that the selected authoritative servers are enlisted in the top-level domain servers to ensure the activation of the new subdomain. From now on, you can add new records for your new subdomain. Many authoritative DNS server implementations allow for this through friendly web-based management interfaces. The registration of a new subdomain is only needed for new domains and is done once. How does this apply to DLT? Think through if your decentralized project requires a new domain registration and ensure you know how to add or change DNS records when needed. The Internet utilizes numerous communication, transport, and application protocols. Their cooperation is defined by the TCP IP stack. In a stack, various protocols are organized into functional layers. This enables the separation of physical connectivity, IP networking, end-to-end -end transport, and application specifics. It makes the exploration, design, and development of Internet-based solutions easier. At the same time, it assures interoperability of different implementations. Because of it, we can, example, simply replace an Ethernet adapter in a computer with a different manufacturer and the computer continues to work smoothly without any reconfigurations. The physical and data link layers deal with the physical connectivity of a host. E.g., an Ethernet adapter, a tangible part of a computer, in a host device provides the functionality of those two layers. On the Internet, the network layer is dominated by the Internet protocol. We have discussed it before. Two communication protocols are found at the transport layer, the TCP and the UDP. They transport the data between particular end-to-end -end applications. Frequently, other protocols complement them with security features. The network and transport layer protocols are usually a part of the operating system of a computer, mobile device, or IoT device. At the application layer, numerous application protocols reflect the variety of ways the Internet is being used. We have protocols for web browsing, file transfer, email exchange, remote access to computers, real-time audio and video communication, and so on. How does this apply to DLT? Blockchain networks are implemented as application layer protocols. They utilize the underlying transport, network, data, and physical layer the same way as any other Internet application. We need several addressing principles jointly working in a TCP IP system. Different addressing is needed because we address entities at different layers and we address different details. We need addressing at the physical and data link layer to target a specific device in a specific physical network, example, Ethernet address in a local Ethernet network, IMEI, to differentiate between different mobile devices. The IP addresses enable connections in the IP-based network layer. Transport addresses provide fine granularity to address a specific process-slash-application that generates or consumes data carried over the Internet. Domain names are an additional addressing layer implemented at the application layer of the TCP IP model. A user only inserts the correct domain name to request information from a web server. However, in the background, the user's host computer, the IP network and the target host computer employ all the mentioned addressing information for their operation. A host is usually identified by one IP address. However, numerous processes, applications, services, daemons, can run on this host simultaneously, and all utilize internet communication. 
we need a mechanism to separate the data flows for these applications, even if they all access the internet from the same IP address. The transport layer protocols provide this mechanism. Each process requiring IP connectivity in a host has assigned a unique transport port number. The transport address comprises the port number of the source and destination applications, source and destination IP addresses of the hosts that run these processes, and the selected transport protocol. The most frequent two are the UDP and TCP. The transport address uniquely defines the data flow between the source and destination process, not only the hosts, on the internet. UDP protocol is simple and provides no other functions besides the transport addressing, supporting the port numbers. Due to its simplicity, UDP introduces minimum additional communication latency and is predominantly used for delay-sensitive real-time applications, example, audio or video conferencing. TCP protocol, apart from the transport addressing, assures transport reliability. It compensates for possible loss, error, duplications, and disorder of transported segments and thus assures error-free end-to-end transport. It is used by applications that require reliable transport at the cost of slightly increased latency. How does this apply to DLT? Blockchain nodes usually require several processes to run simultaneously, example, the control console of the node, blockchain P2P, protocols, and the node RPC API. These reside at the same host, one IP address, for all of them, but are distinguished by unique port addresses. When accessing these processes, you must provide their port addresses apart from the connecting IPs. The default ports in a node are listed in the node's documentation. Verify it if you have problems accessing these services. Let's consider the following example. There is a web server in our local network. We use Ethernet to interconnect locally. Host computers in this network can access the web server and retrieve its content. The web hosting application runs on a computer with a static IP address. Besides, it has a DNS entry www.shays-network.org that points to the IP address of this server. The server has an HTTP web service process listening at the transport port 80. It receives and processes all the requests addressed to the server's IP address and transported to port number 80. When a user from his host computer requests a web page from the server, the operating system in the host first requests the DNS resolution of the www.shays-network.org name. Next, the web browser initiates a TCP transport session to the server's IP address and the web serving application's transport port. All the transport segments are encapsulated in IP datagrams for the Internet Protocol Exchange. Each segment is encapsulated in an Ethernet frame for physical exchange between the host and the server. Encapsulation means adding additional protocol data unit headers and including the needed addresses as well as some additional control information in it. Other host computers similarly access the same server. Although their segments flow over the same network and target the same serving computer, IP address, and web service transport port, 80, their data flows differ in host IP addresses and can be correctly distinguished by the server. Thank you for listening to this lecture.